Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for attending the webinar about multitasking for product managers. I am Maria Dalavica, and I'm lead product manager at Tier Mobility. Multiple times throughout my career, I have found myself dealing with multiple tasks almost at the same time, or to switch focus multiple times per day. I'd like to share a methodology that I have witnessed to be the most helpful in such situations. Let's start with the definition of multitasking. This is actually about the performance of more than one task at the same time or shifting focus between tasks. Even if there are cases where we have to be multitaskers, research has shown that our brain is not as great as we think of handling multiple tasks simultaneously, especially when they are tasks of high complexity. I'm not here to promote multitasking, but rather to share a way of using it effectively. This is why I would like to highlight some of the dangers. It has been observed that the performance can be reduced due to the time our brain, our brain needs to switch focus from one task to another, or in the long run, we might lose the ability to remain focused. Overall, our mental health can be negatively affected by increasing level of stress or feeling of anxiety because of multitasking. Having said all that, multitasking is not all about negative side effects, but it actually has multiple benefits of which we want to take advantage. Creativity, flexibility, and adaptability are some to name. When we multitask, the brain works harder to satisfy the increased needs for mental resources. This activation leads to cognitive flexibility. After all, our ability of monotasking is also limited and we need a change of focus to get back to creative thinking. Last but not least, I would like to refer to the benefit of another critical skill that product managers really need. This is about time management. By combining tasks, um, for instance, we can shorten the time to completion and enables us to create more time for other things. Since we want to safely multitask, it's important to identify the cases where this is needed. Some of these cases are when we are involved in more than one things. This can happen in our, um, in our careers that for various reasons, the teams are understaffed and some uh, times product managers have to fulfill roles in more than one team. Another situation can be when we are involved in strategic decisions, where we actually have to attend a lot of meetings, deep dive into different resources in order to understand and take related decisions. Something that also requires a very frequent change of focus. Another situation, and I think the most common one, can be when we work in fast-paced environments where everything happens fast, things are changing. We have to keep track of many different uh, processes and we have to be uh, up to speed for all the changes. Then we really need to boost our multitasking skills. Another situation is when we are working on one project or product and starting, and we're about to start another. This is also very typical in product managers' life. When the product development team is focusing on the current development, we start to prepare the next topics to come. So in these situations, we might be interrupted by questions for clarifications or for testing or for rollout plans or whatever whatever can be related to the current product. And while we also have to do the discovery, analysis, 
attend meetings, interview user stakeholders for the upcoming topics. Actually, <laughs> this is all about being a product manager. It might be a synonym at the end. Multitask equals product management. No, this was a joke. <laughs> so, uh, some skills as PMs that we need to improve in order to ease multitasking are the following three. Prioritization, important to focus not only in backlog and roadmap priorities, but also to our personal schedule. Delegation, you can involve more people in the tasks in, in our to-do list, something that has multiple benefits, not only for us, but also for the company overall. And coaching, this is about helping the product development teams to understand the product principles and the product vision. Let's dive a bit deeper in each one of these three pillars. Prioritization. Um, here, I would divide this to two different um, buckets. One is our personal tasks list, and the other is common backlog and roadmap prioritization. I would advise to go for a preparation for a homework for our next week so that we can organize our week with uh, specific milestones that will help us to understand what tasks we are about to do and to estimate how much time we will need per task. For instance, next week I would like to prepare user service together with the product design team or to finish some documentation. Here you can find useful the Pomodoro technique which uh, you set it where you set a timer um, and you want where you want to accomplish something so that this can keep you a bit more focused. Another um, principle that you might find useful here in order to help your daily tasks uh, prioritization is the 2080 or 8020 principle where here the focus is to complete the 20% of the tasks that result in 80% of the impact we can create on this day. Now that we have organized and prioritized our personal uh, to-do list, it's also we can focus on prioritizing the, back, the team's backlog and the roadmap. To have a prioritized backlog can really reduce distractions about clarifications and eases the planning. I think you have also found yourself in a situation where um, the team needs an extra ticket to work on or something extra to do because of various reasons. And if your backlog is prioritized and groomed, you can just pick the next one in priority instead of having again to organize meetings, spend time to find out the requirements or what's next and so on. Then, um, um, about roadmap prioritization especially, I would really advise to use some of the very popular frameworks and prioritization techniques that and pick the one that is as objective as possible in order to avoid frequent frictions. My favorite one is the weighted score technique where you can actually take into consideration the business uh, goals, uh, feasibility, and you require input from all stakeholders so that you can achieve the most objective um, result possible. Of course, there are plenty of them out there. So this was just an example to name. The second pillar of um, of this methodology is about delegation. 
This is not about getting rid of tasks of our to-do list because at the end we are accountable for the results of our tasks. But this is about um, making these tasks a bit lighter. We can share the, the, the subtasks, let's say, with uh, other people in order to have more time to focus on different tasks. Here, you will say, you might think like, why to delegate? Of course, one reason is to reduce our workload. Another good reason, which actually has uh, multiple benefits, is because this way we enable our colleagues to learn new things and to grow. And also, things get done faster because this is an actual um, work in parallel. Now, how to decide what tasks and to whom to delegate? Here, uh, we have to sort the tasks and I recommend this simple method of urgency and importance, where you can have this diagram and decide what tasks are important and what tasks are urgent. And you can pick and delegate the tasks which are important, but not urgent. If something is important and urgent, you have to do it now. If it's not urgent, but important, you can decide when to do. If it's urgent and not important, delegate. And if it's not urgent and not important, just get it out of your to-do list. And Finally, how to find the right people to delegate? Here, there are some decision factors that you can decide, like you can take into consideration. This is the experience of people, and especially when you uh, think of a specific task, you have to find the people with the right expertise. Or efficiency, maybe someone is not so experienced, but has proved uh, him or her or itself um, about how efficient they are and how maybe they are fast learners and they can accomplish tasks um, fast or in um, in a time frame where it it will not delay the task overall and last but not least also willingness it's a good factor to decide now how to ensure the success of delegation. Here again, we do not forget that if a task is in our to-do list, we are accountable for this. So the outcome is our uh, responsibility. This is why we have to set the right processes to monitor the progress of the task that th this other person will do. I would recommend here to have some maybe weekly check-ins or you will decide the right pace uh, in order to see the progress, to give the opportunity to this other person to ask you questions. And once the task is accomplished, you can finally have the feedback talk so that the other person also knows how uh, this went. And you can also receive feedback of how you was as, uh, as a body to work with. And this way, we have achieved someone having more, uh, having learned a new uh, skill, being more um, involved in different tasks, and actually um, feel more uh, creative. The last pillar of this methodology uh, is the coaching. Here you might think of uh, product managers um, coaching where it mostly refers to 
um, coach other product managers about uh, state of the art frameworks or to um, help them um, move forward with some of their uh, work they have to do. So I will abuse, let's say, a bit this term and use it a bit differently. By coaching here, I mostly mean of actually help the team, help the product development teams to be uh, involved and understand how the whole product development life cycle happens. Not only the um, design and the um, development phase, but also the discovery, or also um, let them understand the product vision, uh, include them in the product vision statement or the product principles. Here, what I mean is that if you can, if you involve the product development team in the product vision statement, this will help the team to understand what is relevant for product development in the long, in the long run. The team will be inspired and creative and involvement will also boost the sense of ownership. So, imagine a situation where, again, you have millions of things to do and there, there are some decisions to be made about the current development, um, implementation decisions, I mean, or like how the product should behave where typical product managers are also involved. If the team is aware of um, the mission, what the mission of the product is, or what the audience or the targets or the business goals of our products are, it's easier for them to decide, to take decisions without the product manager being involved. Because this is a process where we have built all together and we have learned from each other. So the, some decisions can be made without you spending time there. Another important factor here is to engage the team in product principles. The product principles will help the team to make decisions for the product development. Because this will be around the same goals around the same ideas of how we want to build a product. Also, it will help the team to stay focused. Um, and this is also an exercise where it has to be done. It takes some time. It has to be done again altogether. It requires time. It, it requires you to invest time in um, working together with the team on decision making or in um, involving them in um, such meetings like product vision statements or conversations about product principles but at the end it will have the great benefit not only of having less involvement from product managers in many situations, which saves time, but also helping the team to grow and to um, have new skills. And the last item I would like to highlight here is a trust. Of course, we have to trust the team. And by team, I mean like product managers and engineers, product um, um, designers, we are all one team, we have to trust each other and we can make decisions without having the need of every time all of us being at the same room discussing every single detail. And all this we achieve if we really train each other into uh, making decisions about product development. And that was it actually about the methodology 
of how you can efficiently multitask without putting yourself in danger to burn up. Thank you very much for attending. <laughs>